Are you ready for more, Mike? Because I'm ready. I have presupposed that I'm ready for more. So let's do it. Sweet. So we have from Canada, pronouns are he, him, uh, a theist. Is, is, is the name correct as MacGruber? Uh, that's correct. So like boot to the head MacGruber? Um, like not Hans Gruber, like the Will Forte character uh, on SNL, MacGruber. Sweet. So you're you're calling in to tell us that Cy Ten Bruggen Kate demolished me, um, and that he you're going to, yeah, well, you're wrong, but it's it's hilarious that you well, think so. I'm, but go ahead, we're we're going to start with a uh, uh, a minute on the clock so that you can assert your presuppositionalist stuff. Okay, uh, premise one: God is necessary for intelligibility. Uh, premise two, uh, we have intelligibility. Therefore, conclusion, God exists. Swish. All right, awesome. So pr premise... Congratulations. Premise, uh, premise one is a by... Like, you could just look at that as a biconditional, right? So it could be like, intelligibility exists if and only if the Christian God exists. Would you agree that that's a, uh, not... That's like a decent steel man of, what, of the first premise or a way that you're looking at it? Uh, yes. That's correct. Awesome. So what great. So what's the argument that uh for, for that claim? Why is that the case? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked, Jay Mike. Uh it's that it has been revealed as such in both natural and special revelation. Okay, awesome. So what does what does reveal mean to you? It's not what it means to me, it's what it means. Like it's Yeah, what, how are you how are you using the word? What is revealed? No, no, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I, I'm gonna well, jump in for a second. Me, Interrupt I'll interrupt you whenever the fuck I want. So here, here we go. Let me first of all, let me put you on mute for a second. Um, it is about what the word means to you. Let me explain something to you about language. And that is words don't have intrinsic meaning, they have usage. And so when you use a word like revealed, it may be the case that your usage and my understanding of revealed are the same. It may also be that they're slightly different. So when Mike asks, what do you mean by revealed? And you come back with your snarky little bullshit about it doesn't mean it doesn't matter what it means to you. You're wrong. You are fundamentally, demonstrably, over the top, ridiculously wrong. This is about how conversations work. If we want to get to the point where we understand what you're saying and Mike seeks clarity or I seek clarity, it is perfectly acceptable to say, what does this mean to you? How are you using this term? If you don't understand that, then you have no business carrying on any further in this conversation. So I've now taken you off mute. Answer Mike's question, please, about what you mean by revealed. Uh, I apologize. Usually in my discussions with atheists, they use that as a time, like a, a delay tactic in order to stalemate the conversation. Uh, so by revealed, I mean he, uh, well, he created the world such that we can know that he exists and that he uh, appear, he has given us divine revelation in the form of the Christian scriptures. Okay, and so when you're saying when God reveals this to you, um, how do you not beg the question that you've actually been given the propositions that are revealed to you are true and not actually being revealed to you as false propositions? How do you actually adjudicate that well, without begging the question? You can't clarify. say God's just given it to you. Like how, how do you actually do it? Let me clarify. He hasn't revealed it to me. He's revealed it to you too. You merely suppress the truth and unrighteousness per Romans 1, uh, chapter uh, uh, Romans chapter one verse eighteen to twenty five. Let's get yeah. That so, away. well, hold, well on, hold on. We we've got it out of the okay. way. It, go ahead. That, there, well, there's actually an, there's an issue with that like reasoning and and um, Alex Mal uh, Alex Malpass points this out. Like if you just have this um, this claim that like if God exists, then you know it, right? You know it, therefore God exists. Like it's really easy to take that argument and just be like. Okay, like if God exists, you know it. I don't know it. Therefore, God doesn't exist, right? Because you're specifically defining this God as having not everybody having knowledge of it. I don't have knowledge of it. What's my what's the, how do I back up that premise? Well, knowledge is knowledge is often discussed as a justified true belief. Not only is do I not have knowledge, I don't even believe the proposition to be true, right? I don't hold the proposition God. Ex hold on, I'm not done. I don't hold the proposition uh, right. God to I, exist. I've now muted him because he can't stay silent when somebody's speaking. Yeah, so I don't believe in the proposition God exists, right? I don't believe that proposition to be true. Okay, so I can substantiate my premise based on your line of reasoning. When you want to make some statement that I must know God exists, 
uh, and that therefore God exists? It's, well, it's not the case, right? Because if I don't know it, it just deductively follows that your God doesn't exist, right? I can just modus tollens you, which is just to take your argument and then flip it. It's really easy to do. So I don't know like how you would make some claim because when you go, no, you actually do suppress it. All you're saying is, no, I don't believe you. And you stick your fingers in your ear, right? Yeah. That's not charitable. Like, if I'm yeah. telling you I don't believe the proposition and you're just saying I suppress it, there's no way we can go forward because you're just saying, no. I'm not saying, no, uh, I am, I am prioritize, prioritizing your claims, uh, heathen atheists' claims over the, over the truth claims of the Christian God. Like, I believe no, God no. more than I believe you. No, no, no. Here's what we're asking. Your assertion is that God has revealed himself to everybody, but that J. Mike and I suppress it. Prove that we yeah. are suppressing it. I don't need to prove it. It's been revealed. That yes, way. you absolutely do, sir. I'm, I'm sorry that you, you didn't, you came in and you thought you were going to swish in five seconds, but you I didn't. Did. I already did. Mag Mag hey, Mag Mag congratulations Mag on your self-satisfaction. But if you're going to claim that X is real, but J. Mike and I just suppress it, and we ask you to demonstrate the truth of that, and you say you don't have to, then why would we continue talking to you if you're not going to make your case for what you believe to be true? Yeah, look, it's... Yeah, it's, it's, it's I believe... Like Go ahead, Magruder. I'd rather have the conversation. Yeah, but here's no, the... No, here's, I, here's, I just asked you a question. Here's the issue I'm having, right? When because there's there's several issues. One revelation is apparently enough for you to just gain access to all knowledge, and you can't, you couldn't, like, you're you're absolutely right about that. But I could parry to that, be like, I went out in the woods, and I smoked a bowl, and naturalism revealed itself to me, right? And then I come up to you and I say, you actually believe naturalism is true, you just suppress it, right? And then you go, okay, demonstrate that. I go, I don't have to demonstrate that. That is the exact thing that you called in and did, literally what you did. Yeah. Do you think that's a good way of, of arguing or do you really think that you're being intellectually honest or actually care about truth if you're just going to go, ooh? When the, when the transcendent God of the universe reveals something versus when like average guy, J. Mike, reveals something, like I take those claims with different value. Uh, what? Okay, MacGruber. See, I, I would too. If the God of the universe revealed something, I would take that in a different category than if MacGruber revealed something to me. The difference is I have no evidence and no reason to believe that there is a God of the universe and that that God has revealed anything. We've been asking you to demonstrate that. And instead of demonstrating it, you're just asserting that it's the case and asserting that we're suppressing it. If you're not going to do better than that, I'm going to move on to a caller who actually gives a shit about conversation, gives a shit about demonstrating the truth of their claims rather than claiming swish all smug at the beginning and winding up looking like a tool. Is it? Hello. Is it my turn? I'm watching the, yeah, I'm watching the feed. So I think the feed's delayed. Anyway. Well, that's um, pretty stupid. Okay. Then. Aren't then you told about, not yeah, to do that? Yeah, no kidding. I, no, I weren't you told, told not to, to do that by the call feed. screeners? No, I wasn't, but okay. That's a lie. Um, anyway, it's not a lie. Like, I was told to mute the thing. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to do the meta. So uh, <laughs> thanks for the bullying, Get, though. Uh, oh, oh, I'm bullying. Anyhow. Bring yeah, it on, bitch. Right now, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. Bring anyway, it. Anyway, um, so there's also the impossibility of the contrary. Like, God is necessary. That's ju that just repeats the claim. Why do you all say this? I, I, sorry, Matt, but this really bothers me. When, no, no, you, no, no, no. when you make a statement like it's the impossibility of the contrary, it is so stupid. You're saying you're saying P is necessarily true and not P can't exist. Right. And and how do I know P can exist? Because the impossibility of the contrary. You're just making the same claim you did. Right. You think P is necessary. You think not P can't exist. So think of not P as all other worldviews. And I go, well, I can't like naturalism be true. And you go impossible to the contrary. You're just saying the same thing that you said. So so instead of just repeating the claim a thousand times, support the premise that you've given, the biconditional, more specifically, that intelligibility and facts of the world require the Christian God. Give me the argument for that. Don't just like merely say that I suppress the truth. Don't do that. This is why nobody in philosophy takes presuppositional presuppositionalism seriously. It's garbage. So please substantiate your premise instead of hand-waving or trying to be like, oh, I suppress this. What's the actual argument? I'm going to unmute you, and I want, I want to be very clear about something. 
we were having a discussion where you were saying that God is necessary for intelligibility, and that the reason for that you know this to be true is that God has revealed it to everyone, but that we suppress it. When we got you to get to the point where you refused to defend that premise, defend, defend that position, you then decided to move on to a new argument that, while related, is different. So if you want to move on to the impossibility of the contrary argument, first concede that your everything you said prior is absolutely useless. Otherwise, defend it. You either defend what you started with or you admit that you failed before moving on. You can't have it both ways. Which is it? Um, one, I don't need to defend it. It's been revealed in the Bible. Goodbye. It's, it's frustrating. When someone you guys wants to... and your wrong answers. It was also even more frustrating when someone wants to say it's impossible to like the contrary is impossible. Like the way I take impossibility, or at least I don't know, I don't know how you do as well, Matt, but like, um, when the only way that I really know something to be impossible is like if it entails a contradiction, right? So if that's right. the case that you're making it like the worldview which that I believe in, say I'm a naturalist or something, I don't really like to use the term, but say I'm a naturalist and, um, you want to you want to make the claim that that's impossibility to the contrary because p has to be true or theism has to be true. Well, then what's the contradiction entailed by my worldview? Like, what is it that actually makes it impossible? Like, what are the two propositions or the set of beliefs that I have that, when combined together, are like in tension with each other? Because nobody seemingly can just it, if it's a contradiction, right? If a square can't be a circle, it should be easy for you to explain why. Uh, and I don't understand why this is not the case for like this presuppositional tactic, right? It, it seems like you would have more uh, below that claim than just s simply saying it, right? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, when we started this call, he starts off with the uh, Cy Brungate demolished me when Cy presented exactly one argument, which was demonstrably fallacious, as was pointed out by um, someone during the Q&A, a, a fallacy that I had actually missed, which demolished it. And apart from that, Cy hasn't done anything apart from get booted from his church and no longer be an apologist um, for due to, I don't know, he did something uh, sinful, I think, and, and lost it. But if we're sitting here and you want to say, okay, God has revealed himself, of course we're going to, you have to anticipate these questions. How do you know that God's revealed himself? Ah, well, everybody knows it. You're just suppressing it. Okay, that's an absolutely useless line of argument. And as J. Mike already pointed out, anybody could say that about anything. Um, and 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 the the he just went back to the yes, but I think a revelation from God's more important than J. Mike. I do too. I love you, J. Mike. You're awesome. But I think a revelation from God would be more important than what J. Mike has told me. Uh, fortunately for everybody in the world. We have no examples of any revelation from any God ever. And we have tons of incredibly wise revelations from J. Mike. So I'm going to stick with, with that for now. But it, it, to, to try to switch gears, uh, uh, it's really difficult if you're not willing to acknowledge points. If I make a bad argument and you point out where it's fallacious, I will say, aha, that argument is fallacious. Let's set that aside and move on. Theists don't do that. The theists call in, and when they get back to a corner, they just switch gears and, and try to present a different argument, a different version of an argument, or uh, make appeals to faith. You've got to come with your A game.